State v. Yoder. And uh, let's get to that page. All right. Let me start the time again. And once again, uh, the state has waived uh, oral arguments, so you have 15 minutes to argue as you wish. Very good. Thank you. I read the briefs and we're ready. This particular case, Your Honors, uh, as I said before, my name is Christina Reihel. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Yoder in this particular matter. This matter is an argument that the court sees regularly. This is a manifest way of sufficiency of the evidence argument. And as I am well aware, um, the court is going to look at that and say, really, another one? In this Actually, particular... those are kind of interesting cases. <laughs> I'd agree. From my perspective, I agree with that, Your In this particular case, Mr. Yoder was charged with one count of aggravated menacing by stalking involving a woman that he had previously been involved in a romantic relationship with. There are three different points of contention that I've pointed out in my brief. I'm not going to go through and belabor them. I'm just going to speak them very, very briefly and see if the court has any questions. One of the requirements is there has to be a pattern of two or more, or more behaviors close in time. In this particular incidence, the facts in the case show that they broke up, broke up sometime in January, that the two of them continued to have contact up until about June or July. It looks from the officer's testimony that it was July. Um, the alleged victim's testimony, I should actually say this right now, the alleged victim was not very good at giving and she was very honest about the fact that she wasn't very good at giving dates. Because, for example, she would say, well, I think the call that made me call the police was in June. And the officer said, well, I talked to her in July. So if the alleged victim says, I think the phone call came in sometime in June, but the officer says, I know my report says it was in July, we're pretty sure it was probably in July, and she admits that she could be mistaken on dates. Same thing with the second incident in this particular case, which was an incident in a parking lot later in September. The alleged victim says, well, I think it could have happened in July or August. Or I'm not sure when it happened, but I think it was then. But I know I got my civil protection order against him after it happened. She didn't get the civil protection order until September, and the police officer, again, didn't get the report until September. So we're pretty sure that it really happened in September and she's just not entirely clear on dates. And that's very important in this case because the evidence basically shows that there are these two main incidents. One phone call where she says, oh, he said that something bad would happen if he saw me and my boyfriend out again. He saw me and my boyfriend out. He calls me. He says, I saw you out. Something bad may happen if I see you out again. That's pretty much what he says. She hangs up the phone, she goes on with her day. She calls the police, I think it was a day or two later after that incident. The second incident is a parking lot. There's absolutely no evidence as to why they both ended up at the same area. It's a parking lot that is actually separated in the middle, so you've got two separate spaces. You can't actually drive through these two parking lots to get to each other. She's in one parking lot, he's in the other. He sees her, he says, are you going to talk to me? She gets in her car and she drives away. These are the two main incidents. There is also evidence that there were multiple phone calls between January when the parties broke up and July when this first phone call came in that was reported to the police. The only evidence in the record as to what these phone calls entail includes they could be angry, they could be apologetic, they could be cussing, but we have no idea whether any of them were actually threatening. Well, which, if either, of these two incidents happened after the police officer spoke with your client and advised him that he was to have no contact? Only the parking lot incident in September. Okay. The officer contacted him after she had contacted the police after the one phone call. So prior to that phone call, there's also no evidence that she said, leave me alone, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Because in that time, she also admitted she's inviting him over to her house, He's going over to her house. They're going back and forth. They're still spending time together, even though they're not in a romantic relationship. 
And although she says at one point, well, I broke up with him because he had a temper, she's not acting like this is a problem because she continues to go over to his place voluntarily. She continues to take his phone calls, and she never says, hey, stop calling me. Don't call me. And again, we have no idea what these phone calls during those six months before the officer said, hey, you got to stop. We don't know what those phone calls entailed except for the last one. Because the other one is just a very vague description. He could be angry because his baseball team lost. We don't know. We don't know what he's angry about. We don't know what he's cussing about. We also know, that's one of the first prompts that I have addressed in my brief, is that there's really not a pattern of stalking here. We're talking about two possible incidents, one in a parking lot where it doesn't even seem like he's not following her, he's not doing anything, they just happen to end up in the same parking lot. She's got a protection order after that. So again, she can't go after him for a violation of the protection order because she didn't bother getting one until after that. And if I remember correctly, he didn't challenge that, but that's not a record. The second issue is, when you have a menacing by stalking conviction, you have to have either physical threat of physical harm or you've got to have mental distress to the point that you have to change the way you're living because you're so distressed or there needs to be treatment. And there's no evidence of either of those things in this particular case. The third thing is that he has to know that what he is doing, this is a crime. This is a, I have to know when I call her or when I ask her in the parking lot, are you going to talk to me? I have to know that what I am doing is going to cause her this mental distress or a fear of physical harm. Stopping somebody in a parking lot when you haven't seen them for several months and saying, hey, will you talk to me? Is that really enough to say you should know that this is going to put her in fear? Well, this is after the phone call, the, the phone call where he allegedly threatened her. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, this is several months after that. Those are really the three main points. Um, and what was her testimony regarding the um, emotional or mental distress? Her te testimony regarding emotional and mental distress is that she was distressed and that she did feel threatened, especially by the phone call, and that she was afraid when he stopped and asked her, will you talk to me in the parking lot? Um, the additional testimony, however, there's no evidence that she did anything different with her life. She got in her car, she drove away. After she got the phone call that she claimed was threatening earlier in July, uh, she was ready to go to a funeral. She went to the funeral, she didn't say anything to anybody, she reports it a day or two later to a police officer. So it wasn't something where she's so afraid that she calls somebody and says, oh my gosh, can you believe he just did this, I'm afraid to leave my house, or I think he's going to show up at the funeral. She didn't really alter her behavior in any way. And she de there's definitely no evidence that she went and sought treatment for anything. And I'm not saying that we should minimize this and that it's a perfectly good idea for him to continue doing these things. But the question is, does it rise to that level of criminal activity to the point where he should have known that this was causing her such immense distress that he shouldn't approach her, that she did, shouldn't do anything around her. When there's been that intervening, it's July, you're talking about two months intervening between when he happened to run into her in the parking lot from when the officer called and said, don't call her. Well, he didn't call her. He didn't talk to her. He didn't follow her. He ran into her parking lot. Not literally. Take your time. Who, uh, who testified at the trial? The officer that received the phone calls testified at the trial as well as the victim. I am double checking for sure because I have the impression that I don't believe my client testified. Patrolman testified, the alleged victim testified, and these are the only two individuals who testified. Okay, thank you. So I think the main point on this is. The state's brief appears to indicate that there were more than just this phone call and the one incident in the parking lot. Um, I, from reading the transcripts and the state's brief, again, I think this ties back into the, the alleged victim, which was really bad with things. And it's very clear when you read through her testimony that, well, it might have been here, it might have been here. It could have been as late as September, but I'm not sure. 
But I know I called the police after it happened and filed a report. And the police can say, here's when that report was filed, so here's when the incident likely happened, as opposed to, oh, there might have been two or three incidents because she said it may have happened in July or August or September or June or July. So it's not there's an incident every month. It's there were two incidents, and she's just very vague on what they had. Unless your honors have any other questions. Apparently not. We're very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll, uh, likewise, we'll um, conference uh, with our colleague and uh, write an opinion which will be sent to both parties. Thank you. Have a good day.